something keep holding me and I made a firm decision that I will stand by his side I will stand with him for better and for worse and I said <laughs> and I said Lord if this is our worst we will have to go through it together I can't leave my partner Amen. They hit my hands with chains, but they won't hit my heart. They hit my hands with chains, but they won't hit my feet. They hit my feet with chains, but they won't hit my revelation. They say, Man, they change my clothes. They change my clothes, but they won't change my life. Change my position. Listen, I lost a lot of things. I lost my car. I lost my house. I said, enemy of the Lord, I'm not going to lose character. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I thought maybe I should just take a few minutes and just uh, reflect on the tragedy, uh, naturally speaking, that has befallen us. Uh, with the departure of Brother Babes Ngolwani and Sister Eunice Ngolwani, uh, together with their mother, uh, Sister Shenek. Uh, we want to appreciate the Lord for uh, saving Brother Shenek, and we solicit prayers for the families, the two families, the Ngolwani, and together with the Shaneke family. 
uh, I want to reflect on the lives, particularly of Brother Babes and Sister Babes, or Sister Eunice, as I've been very close to them. They were my friends. Uh, they visited my house a few times. We spent time together whenever we would visit Zimbabwe. would lodge in the same hotel and spend hours and hours until the wee hours of the morning just speaking. And if you have been in their presence and know their sense of humor, you would understand why we would spend time until the wee hours of the morning. And uh, their departure has been naturally tragic. I use the word naturally as an operative word because uh, for any tragedy to the believers, there is a natural side and there is a spiritual side. Naturally, it was tra is tragic. It is a tragedy. But spiritually, it is not a tragedy because we know where they are. Now, we need to remember the kids in our prayers. But I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes reflecting on the times and sharing my thoughts on these dear friends of mine that have gone to be with the Lord. Let's just turn our Bibles to the book of the preacher as we bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we appreciate you for the time that you have granted us. We appreciate you, dear God, that we have this time to reflect on the times that we have spent with the Nolani family. May you send or comfort the family especially the kids and the church and friends all over the world that have been affected by this tragedy. And Lord, we say, give us the ways of comfort. And Lord, I commit everything to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in the book of the preacher, chapter 3, it is sites, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3. It says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. I think here the Bible tells us that there is a time and a season to everything here on earth. There is a time to be born and there is a time to be to die. Now, when I, I think it was on Monday morning, I was still fast asleep because it was early in the morning. My wife woke me up and told me that his sister, brother Babes, sister Eunice, and sister Shenek have passed away. I jumped out of bed because and my wife is not the one that is prone to doing pranks. I thought maybe... I hoped that it would be the first time that you would be trying that, that it could not be true. It has to be a prank of some sort. And while I was still in a state of shock and wondering on the how, how, how true were the news that our dear friends have departed, then I got a call from Brother Robertson from Margate to confirm that uh, Brother Babes, Sister Eunice, and Sister Shonek have been involved in a tragic motor accident, and as a result, they have lost uh, their lives. 
I was in denial. It was shocking because a flood of thoughts began to rage through my mind. I began to think of how this couple in recent times have been spending time together to make it up for the lost time that they have lost as a result of the trial of Brother Babes. I began to think of what the children, and especially the eldest, what she would be going through, because I would believe that as an eldest daughter, she still had the recollection of dad not being around. It just didn't make sense. I had many whys. But uh, I believe that our wise can only be answered by the word of God. The prophet in the message expressions, paragraph 5, he says there is, so much, there is so much of life that's expressions. And there is no one that lives on earth, but what sometime in his life he's got to stop and think of where he come from, what's his purpose here, and where he's going hereafter. Everyone likes, would like to look beyond the curtain of time. And this is what the prophet spoke about. Everyone would like to look beyond the curtain of time. Now he says, we all come to a point in our lives where we pause to think on what our purpose here on earth is and where we are going hereafter. And everyone has a desire to look beyond the curtain. And this is the referring to the curtain of time and check what is beyond that. And I believe that Brother Babes and Sister Eunice, as the workers of Christ, I believe that uh, such questions may have crossed their minds many a times and they knew that the time would come where they would live, although they never knew how they would live and especially they never knew that they would live together. The prophet continues in the same message expressions, paragraph 7. He says, we sometimes feel that when we are confronted with something like this, that this is all. But it isn't. It's the changing. It's a step higher. It's passing from one life into another. So Brother Bram says many a times when such a tragedy has occurred, Many people's sight are only limited to what they see with their natural eyes. But he says this is not all that is. There is something beyond this. It's a changing. It's a step higher. It's passing from life into another. Now, we have to admit that Brother Babe, Sister Eunice, and Sister Shenek have taken a step higher they have passed from this life to another life. They have passed from mortality to immortality. They have passed from time to eternity. They have passed from this dimension to another dimension. Now, as we mourn and reflect, and as our hearts are heartbroken, we should never lose a sense of what we know in relation to our being here and our imminent departures from here. The prophet in the message, I'm the resurrection and life, paragraph 4, he says, we have here this afternoon something that's not welcome anywhere at any time. No matter how prepared we are for it, it's always an unwelcome guest that's sure to come to every home. And it's heartless. I'm sure if I had been a death, I don't think I would want to come to a home that this death has come to 
this young Christian that we have his body laying here before us, as we know him as our brother Garnet. Brother Brenham was speaking on a funeral of a young man in his assembly, and he is referring to death as being heartless. And he says, no matter how prepared we are, it's always an unwelcome guest to every home. And he says, if I were to be death, I would have not visited such a home. And I want to submit that if I were death, I would have not visited the Ngolani family, especially what the family have been through. Yes, death in this case is an unwelcome guest. We still had many expectations, and I believe children wanted to spend time together with their parents and to make up for the lost time that they had experienced. But again, death is something that does not negotiate. And if we had an opportunity to negotiate, I think we would have put forth compelling mitigating factors as to why they should have not departed. But unfortunately, when it is time, no one can go beyond that boundary. Now, as I said, when the news came that they had gone, these were still a very young couple. A couple that lost almost seven years in their marriage as a result of Brother Babe's trial that many of you are familiar with. And many times, wherever you would see them, they would always be together. And I believe that uh, the reason being they wanted to make, it, make up for the time that they have lost. I don't know why God decided to take both of them. But I can understand that I don't think Brother Babes would have survived longer without Sister Eunice. I don't think Sister Eunice would have survived longer without Brother Babes. And in the clip that I've played, there, is, there are a few ways that Sister Eunice said, and I'm going to play those ways once again. He said, she said, I would never leave my partner behind. And I believe it was the case in this death. Even in their departing, Sister Eunice would have not left Brother Babes behind. Brother Babes would have not left Sister Eunice behind. This is the couple that stuck together against all odds. They've had many opportunities to walk away from their marriages, and it would have been understandable to some. But against all odds, they stuck together, and even in death, they stuck together. I just want to reflect when I first met the couple and how I met the couple, I received a DVD from Brother Robertson, and that DVD, I had it in my, in my, I think it was in my backpack, and we were in church one evening uh, during a midweek with a technical team because they were testing a few things at church. And when they wanted to test it, then I said, look, maybe I have this DVD that I received. Maybe just to test your things, let's put in this DVD. Then we put in the DVD, and it was Brother Babe's testimony. I had heard about him prior to that, but I never followed up on his story. But when the DVD played, mind you, we were just testing but we ended up watching the entire DVD of his testimony of surviving the present life. I think the testimony, he was giving it at Brother Beckett's church. And immediately I remember I was quite moved 
by what the by the impact or this testimony had such an immense impact on me. I remember I immediately called Brother Roni Munakalo in Mosel Bay and I said, look, I'm watching a DVD of a brother called Babes. Are you perhaps familiar with the brother? Do you have his contact? And Brother Munakalo was kind enough to give me the contact of Brother Babes. And I gave Brother Babes a call and I said, look, I watched your testimony. And I'm of the view that it would be a benefit for my church to listen to such a testimony, but not on a video or on an audio. We want you to come in your uh, physically to give this testimony to them. I remember we made arrangements and we got Brother Babes and Sister Babes. We flew them up here. And my principle then, it was, no matter what, we have to get Brother Babes. And it is not negotiable that wherever Brother Babes goes, he has to go with Sister Eunice because of the lost time that they had experienced in their marriage. So they flew up. I picked them up at O.R. Tambo. We had lunch. And during that lunch, we had planned just to have a quick back, uh, bite and leave O.R. Tambo for Whitbank, but we ended up sitting there for almost four hours because I was just intrigued by the testimony. But what intrigued me most is how they were able to stick with each other despite the odds that they had faced. Many people divorce easily even when the odds are not against them. But here is a couple that faced 25 years maximum sentence, but they opted that they would face that trial together. And I believe that even humanly speaking, this is an admirable testimony. This is an inspirational testimony. This is an impactful testimony. We drove to Whitbank. And he was supposed to preach the following morning. I felt guilty because immediately after dinner, we again sat around the table until the wee hours of the morning. And he came, he gave the testimony. And I looked at them. I remember there were a few personal things that we discussed in preparation for post-prison sentence. And we deliberated on quite a few things that I'm not at liberty to divulge. But these were our friends. They moved around, giving testimonies. They are known in the bright community, lovely couple. And I'm going to speak about them individually. As I said, their testimony was given around, especially in the SEDEC region, it was given in Botswana, it was given in Zimbabwe, it was given in South Africa. Many people around the world got to know about the testimony of Brother Babes and Sister Eunice. And I remember the words of Brother Babes every time he gave the testimony. He would often say, it is not our testimony, but it is the testimony of the bride. He never in any way wanted to use the testimony for self-promotion. He never in any way wanted to use the testimony to advance his personal interests. Many times he had to be persuaded to give that testimony, even at times where he did not feel like he should give the testimony. Folks, no matter what your opinions may be on the testimony, but for a marriage to be able to withstand such a trial, it is an admirable thing that must be noted and that should be an inspiration to the married couple especially the young ones. I want to speak about Brother Babe's character. 
Brother Bram says in the message, Unwelcome Christ, paragraph 165, he says, you know what, I've noticed this in my travels. You usually find great men are little men. I go around where there is great men, really great men, and I know that they are great men. But when I started to leave them, they make you think you are the great men. They are nothing, but you take a little two by four, don't know nothing. He thinks it's all of it. He earned nothing to begin with. It's great men are little men. They never break or take honor. They make you feel that you are great. That's great men. Now, Brother Babes was such a man. He had a very accommodating character. Brother Babes was not the kind to keep grudges, and you would understand as I progress with my reflections on their lives why I say he was not a man to keep grudges. Every person that Brother Babes may, met, he had a way to make them feel important. He had a way to engage with the uniqueness of every individual that he came across. I think many of you would remember how often there is a gesture that you would often make whenever he met, he met people and he would say, Yebo mfundisi. This was the normal gesture of Brother Babes wherever he went, say, Yebo mfundisi, which was a reflection that he was a humble man. And everybody noticed how special Brother Babes was and how he was accessible to all the people. Brother Babes was an eloquent man. Brother Babes was admirable. And I think those that would know, would know the work that he has done with the municipality in Naisna in terms of the moral regeneration in that area. But this was a humble man. And I'll come back to his character. Now, I want to reflect on Sister Eunice. And firstly, she, I will borrow her own words or allow her to speak for herself. But something keep holding me. And I made a firm decision that I will stand by his side. I will stand with him for better and for worse. And I said, <laughs> and I said, Lord, if this is our worst, we will have to go through it together. I can't leave my partner behind. I can't leave my partner behind. I believe if it was the time for Brother Babes to go, Sister Babes must have said, I can't, or if she, it was her time to go, she would have said, I can't leave my partner behind. And I believe Brother Babes would have uttered exactly the same ways, I can't leave my partner behind. Hence, they had to go together. Now, when we speak about vows, Sister Eunice lived her vows. Sister Eunice had an opportunity to walk away many a times from her marriage because of the trial that the husband was going through. But here is a young woman, educated, a pastor's daughter, decided to say, no matter what, I'm into this for a long haul. Sister Eunice's character was outstanding. And whenever you met her, despite the trial that she had gone through, there was not even a room for bitterness. And many times, some of the things that they've gone through, they preferred not to speak about them, but they maintained that sweet spirit around them. I want to speak about Brother Babe's ministry. Some would have called his ministry 
that he was, Brother Babes was charismatic. Some would have regarded him as a revivalist. But in any way or any way where Brother Babes preached, he was able to connect with everybody in his proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was obsessed with the simplicity of the gospel and he just could not stand how people wanted to make it complicated. When Brother Babes preached, it mattered not, not, not it mattered not whether you were in the message for 50 years or you just recently came in or you were just a sinner visiting a church brother babes had a way that he was going to have an impact on you some of the phrases that are synonymous with brother babes is that when god breaks the protocol and i believe that uh, the protocol that we have is that a couple should never die together and the couple should never die at the same time. But I believe that God once again lived up to the weights of Brother Babes. He broke the protocol and said, look, both of you at the same time need a rest. He used to say, speak about a divine mandate. And I believe that Brother Babes fulfilled the divine mandate for the short life and yet impactful life that he has lived here on earth. Brother Babes' ministry has touched many people and I think many people can testify to that. Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, all over and every time you spoke to Brother Babes, he had something, he had something to do, and he wanted to win souls. In the message, what is the Holy Ghost given for? Brother Brenham says some one of the evidences that or one of the things that can serve as the evidence of the Holy Ghost is the desire to save lost souls. Brother Babes was not comfortable just to have a church within the four walls. He believed in the Great Commission and not only believed in it, but he weakly executed the Great Commission. I believe that in our country, there's never been there's been few people that would to that would have thought of outreach programs without including brother babes every time when there is an outreach program people's name people thought of brother name brother babes name first most of the time and i don't know whether is it because of the affinity to the shanek family because brother shanek is known to be a tent man wherever he went pitched a tent to bring as many souls in as possible. I believe it could be the affinity that he had to the Shanake family. But Brother Babe's ministry will be remembered by many. Many that were in his meetings, I have testimonies of people that were on the verge of divorce. And when Brother Babe's preached, they decided to right then that if a couple could withstand such a trial, we as well can withstand whatever comes our way. Next later, some of them decided to come back to faith. Some people that were drug addicts, and we speak as pastors because we know these things, would come privately and say, what this man has gone through, for him to come back and preach the gospel there is indeed a God somewhere. Now, this is the impact that his ministry has had on all of us. And I think it is befitting to pay tribute to this gallant soldier, to pay tribute to this fellow colleague in the ministry, to pay tribute to this father, to pay tribute to this minister, to pay tribute to this prisoner, 
of Jesus Christ, Brother Babes Ngolwani. I went to, I spoke about Brother Babes and Brother Babes was a friend that I would speak to about everything. He was the kind of man that I was at liberty to agree and disagree, if necessarily, bitterly so. And Brother Babes would never hold a grudge. My engagement with Brother Babes, I believe it is that similar to that of Paul and Barnabas. In the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 36 to verse 40, the Bible says, And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached to the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pemenphilia and went not with them to work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder, one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Why am I saying my relationship with Brother Babes was similar to that of Paul and Barnabas? And you would know, despite the contention of Paul and Barnabas, they never became enemies. Actually, later on, we realized that Paul later saw or adopted a view of Barnabas and regarded John Mark as profitable to the ministry. But in this case, I say it is similar in a sense that we did not tiptoe around issues. Where we agreed, we agreed. Where we disagreed, we disagreed. And we know that uh, there was a phase where I disagreed with Brother Babes and particularly with regard to a Ghanaian man called Ovet. And we had nights, there were two nights where we did not sleep over the weekend. We'd have meetings until the wee hours of the morning where I disagreed and said, no, this man is not preaching the message. Now, I was of the view that we given the temperament of Brother Babes, Brother Babes was accommodating to everyone. And I was of the view that somebody was taking advantage of his accommodative nature. And as a result, a brother to a brother, I had to intervene. And I'm glad that later on, Brother Babes is so it fit to separate with that man and continue to preach the message in its truest form. And why I'm saying that, I want to paint a picture of a man that you would disagree with, but he would never regard you as an enemy, would still regard you as a brother. Why do I say that? As recent as before his departure, one morning, half past four in the morning, Brother Babes sent a quotation of Brother Brenham in the message, Have Faith in God, paragraph three, it says, last Sunday afternoon, a week ago, I prayed for 4,000 people individually, one right, one right after the other one. And Brother Babes waits, or a caption, or the message that accompanied the quotation, it was saying, Shalom Fundisi, now and then on inspiration, the Holy Spirit would lead me to put into practice the above strategy for certain servants or our church. And this midnight, I had divine leadership to intercede for you, seven. May sovereign grace and divine favor endow your ministry and family with divine fortification and authority. This was post our sharp contention over the Ghanaian men. And I want to submit that 
If I could turn back the clock of time, I would still have taken the same decision. Why? Because I loved Brother Babes. I remember even during that time, Brother Godwin Chitsindi told me and said, no matter what, Brother Majiba, Brother Babes is a Christian. And I want to confirm that to you that Brother Babes indeed was a Christian. Why am I saying that? It is not easy during our time for people to be subjected to correction and come on the other side without any root of bitterness. Brother Babes never had any root of bitterness. In one of our interactions, as you can see, I send him a text. I say, these other are not my friends, but with you, due to our friendship, I can endure fire-to-fire -fire scenario. I think the Bible says an iron sharpens an iron. And in this case, Brother Babes never hesitated to subject me to fire, for a lack of a better way, whenever he disagreed with me or whenever he wanted to correct me. And in the same vein, I did not hesitate when I had to correct Brother Babes on anything. But yet, Brother Babes would take that with a smile and say, God bless you, Mfundisi. And as it is indicated, Mfundisi, I'm a bit hectic for now. I'm laughing your last comment where I'm referring to fire to fire scenario. And I said, I love our robust discussions. We did not tiptoe around issues. We spoke explicitly on issues and engaged thoroughly. And in many cases, we were able persu to persuade one another. But uh, there is a striking message that he sent me recently during a lockdown. He says, Brother Madiba, if I look at our age, we only got five or seven years of strength left. We need to put heads together, use the bit of strength we have to give direction and endeavor to make impact in our land for this message. I think immediately after I've heard that Brother Babes is gone, I looked at this message and I asked myself, did he have a premonition of some sort? Did he know that his departure was at hand? Because he gave an indication that we didn't have much time to make an impact as far as this message is concerned. And truly, he did not have much time. And now he is gone. And as I remain, I will take him up on this challenge that with a little bit of strength that remains, I will endeavor together with others and especially young ministers to give direction and endeavor to make an impact in our land, South Africa, for this message of the hour. One thing that uh, Brother Babes battled with and that gave him sleepless nights, it was isms that emerged in the message of the hour. He always said the isms that are emerging are robbing us of the purity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as he's gone, I think it is left on us to take up where he left off and make sure that the same obsession, for a lack of a better way, of taking the message to every corner, I think we need to take him up on that challenge. And I think it will make him happy on the other side. Their departure and their untimely departure has broken our hearts. We think of children now that have been 
left behind as orphans. And hence I said, if we had a way to mitigate against death, we would have given some mitigating factors and said to the children have been through so much, it would be unfair that you take both parents, including their grandmother, at this juncture. We would have persuaded death just to delay a bit, maybe for the children to come of age. Maybe for the children to be able to fend for themselves. And I believe that we are not so much worried that they are gone, but we are worried about the timing thereof. But again, who are we to question the sovereignty of God? But we say God must give us the strength to accept what he has decided to do. And pleasant as it is, we can never question God's sovereignty. If he saw it fit that the parents had to go, God is the father to the fatherless. He will take care of the children. And the church in Naisna should be comforted. The families, the Ngolani family, and as well as the Shanek family must be comforted to know that both all of them are resting in the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Babes and Sister Eunice, did you have to live at the same time? I know it is a rhetorical question because I know the answer. Yes, you could never live apart. You had to live together. You left us when we least expected. In your short-lived yet impactful lives, you made your trials our blessings. You made your tears our joy, your weaknesses our strength. Your lows, our highs. You made us question the cruelty of death. And in the same vein to see the shallowness thereof. Death must have smiled to take you away from us. But you must have smiled back because death just became a mode of transport to Beulah Land. You preached and sang about the land beyond the river, and now you are the residents of the very land. Our hearts are full of grief, but our grief must not be mistaken for ignorance. Our eyes are filled with tears due to your departure, but our hearts are full of joy due to your arrival in Beulah Land. Our bodies are weaker due to your absence, but our spirits are stronger due to your testimony. Had we been given a chance to negotiate with death, we would have mitigated for a delay of your departure. We would have persuaded it that you still had many rivers to cross and many mountains to climb. However, the Lord saw it fit that you needed rest in his bosom. Your laughter, your warmth, your kindness, your love, your generosity, all this shall never be forgotten. We shall meet in the Eastern Gate. Go well, soldiers of the cross. You have ran your race. Your race. You have finished your cause. God bless you all.
something keep holding me. And I made a firm decision that I will stand by his side. I will stand with him for better and for worse. And I said, <laughs> and I said, Lord, if this is our worst, we will have to go through it together. I can't leave my partner behind. Amen. They hit my hands with chains, but they won't hit my heart. They hit my hands with chains, but they won't hit my feet. They hit my feet with chains, but they won't hit my revelation. Can you say amen? They change my clothes. They change my clothes, but they won't change my life. Change my position. Listen, I lost a lot of things. I 